Hello, this is Dr. Oz. Today I will be talking about inventory management and this is the second part of this video. Uh, what are the basics of EOQ models? I would like to talk about some of the assumptions in EOQ models. One, in EOQ models we assume that the demand is known, constant and independent. Of course in real life we know that demand is not known we may know the behavior of demand based on historical data, but we cannot really know exactly what the demand is going to be unless it is a pre-assigned or pre-accepted business deal that is a governmental contract and so on. Otherwise, it's really hard to know the future demand. And as we know, the demand is not constant, it fluctuates. And it's not independent either. It depends on the previous performance and type of product and things like that. So uh, this is one of the big, big assumptions here in EOQ, economic order quantity models. Two, the lead time is known and constant. And again, this is another assumption that may not be realistic because I know that when I order products, Take sometimes half a day, sometimes two days, sometimes three days, not constant. And I don't know exactly what lead time is going to be. Of course, I have again an idea of our understanding of lead time based on historical data. Receipt of inventory is instantaneous. Instantaneous. So uh, we assume that we receive the inventory right away. It doesn't take some time and complete we assume that inventory is delivered as we request it's not half it's not 75 percent or it's not more than what we requested quantity discounts are not possible so in basic yoq mode we assume that we cannot get deal if you order more products and another assumption here is um that only variable costs are set up or ordering costs set up costs for production ordering costs for buy decisions and holding costs these are the two different types of costs that we will consider and another assumption here is stock out can be completely avoided which is again a big assumption here and uh, if we have high demand in real life, we will have stockouts problem and we cannot really avoid it. But in a basic EOQ model, we assume that <clears throat> stockouts can be avoided. All right. So let's look at uh, the intuition here, the graph. On the y-axis, we have inventory levels. And on my x-axis, I have time. So inventory starting point right here in time zero, as you see, it goes down, 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 down. And then it reaches this point zero and then instantaneously my inventory is replenished. Again, I sell my products. And again, instantaneously I get my orders replenished and, and so on. So here, this dot line here is called average inventory on hand average inventory on hand and this quantity right here is q over 2 so what's q q is the order quantity q is order quantity so whenever we order we order that my that many products this is my decision variable because that's what i'm trying to figure out the more products i order the more holding costs i will have and and then less frequently i will order then that will decrease my ordering costs but increase my holding costs and so again this is my total order receipt so my total order received and this is my usage rate right here. So the usage rate, in other words, demand. All right. So let's look at the cost. Our objective here is to minimize the total cost. Okay. 
And as we talked about, there are two components of that. Component one, which is holding cost. As you see, the holding cost is a linear line here, and it increases when I increase my order quantity. And my order cost is a nonlinear line here, and it decreases when I increase my order quantity. Again, the reason is that if I order more per order, basically I will order less frequently. So that 